And yesterday I read you a story about a dinosaur that a little girl played with at nighttime. Today I have another dinosaur story and it's called The Field Mouse and the Dinosaur Named Sue. This is one of my favorite stories. It is about a little mouse and a giant fossil. So what do we have left of dinosaurs? Just these fossils, right? Dinosaurs lived a long time ago and what we have left of them are their bones. So the fossils are like rocks and we can, um, they, if we find them, scientists called paleontologists, that's a dinosaur scientist, can put them together so we can see just what that dinosaur looked like. See the size of it and get an idea of what it looked like with just the bones. But you can tell how big it was, how long it was, how tall it was. So this is a great little story. We've had it for a long time. So the field mouse and the dinosaur named Sue by Jan Wall, illustrated by Bob Doucet. Early one morning, Field Mouse heard strange noises outside his burrow. Some loud, some soft. Scritch, scratch, chip, and bang. His house had a roof made of an old bone. Field Mouse peered into the hot day. People with shovels, scrapers, and picks dug into the bluff above, slowly and carefully. So this little mouse, he's happy as a clam, just sleeping underneath his bone. Oh my, cried a young woman, look at this beautiful thing. She showed the others a bone like his roof. Old bones lay all over the place. They were no good for chewing on. They were like rock. In fact, they were rock. That day, and the next, and the next, and the next, diggers kept digging. Field Mouse had to see what was happening. In the afternoon, he wished to take a nap. He scurried back to the home he had known his whole life. When he got there, he saw a terrible sight. His burrow was torn open. The roof was gone. They took my bone away. Now I must find it, he decided. Packing boxes lay here and there. Old, old bones were wrapped in burlap and placed gently in wooden boxes. A worker put a cheese sandwich down on the edge of a box. The cheese sandwich fell in. The old mouse thought his bone might just be in that box too. He climbed in, he sniffed and poked, but he could not find his roof. Suddenly a lid was put on the bo box. It grew black as pitch. The box was lifted onto a truck and the truck drove off. At first, Field Mouse lay on the sandwich, made a nice little bed for him. His stomach rumbled from hunger. It kept him awake. The cheese smelled wonderful. Well, he decided, I'll try eating this. It was wonderful, but he missed his home. The box was taken to a place called Chicago where they had a huge building. The building was called the Field Museum. The box was put on a shelf in a cool place in a special room. So this is actually a museum in Chicago. And they actually found these T-Rex bones, like what, like, the, what, like what the mouse lived under. And we don't really know if the mouse existed, but we know that the bones did. And so that part is a true story. One morning, the lid on the box was open. Field mouse jumped out. On tables lay more bits and pieces of old bones, some large, some tiny. A man was studying them and didn't see him. Field mouse looked and looked for his roof. He flicked his tail and ran when he heard voices. Sue, mumble, mumble, said one. Sue, mumble, said another. What is Sue, wondered the mouse. He squeezed through an opening in the wall and out of the room. He scampered up onto a ledge searching for his bone. He saw something. He, it's so tall 
But he saw something so tall it reached to the sky of the hall. It was Field Mouse's first dinosaur. It had no skin or fur. Down below him, people gazed at the critter. They were small as insects. He grew dizzy and felt lost. So inside the Field Museum in Chicago, they have dinosaurs, fossils of that. So you can see what those dinosaurs look like. Field Mouse hid until nighttime. Then he crawled up to a window. Beyond, many lights of the city twinkled. Far off was a lake. It made him thirsty. He found water in a plastic cup someone had left on the floor. He tipped it over and drank. So there's, he's looking outside at the city. When visitors were gone, Field Mouse was free to run. He saw colors through another glass window. He didn't know it, but he was looking at Chicago as it was 410 million years ago. There were plants, corals, snails, and shells. He scratched to get in. So that's just a display in the museum. He's out looking at all the stuff in the museum. In daytime, if no visitors were near, Field Mouse crawled up and peered into a special place where people seemed very, very busy. They scraped at bones, big and little, or poured plaster on others. They were as careful as the diggers who found the bones had been. They looked odd because they wore masks. masks. Dust flew in the air as they took tiny stones away from old bones. So those fossils are so delicate, they have to be very, very careful with them. There was a lot to explore. Every room was different and he found more people working on bones. Maybe one bone was his roof? He kept searching. Mostly field mouse hid behind walls. It was best to come out only at night. He learned to tunnel from, from one room into another, squeezing into the tiniest crack. One day, he entered a great high room with plants as big as trees, giant dragonflies big as birds. This was Chicago 300 million years ago. He sniffed and sniffed. Nothing was real, nothing to nibble on. He missed his home. Field Mouse thought he would never find his bone. There were so many strange creatures all around him. He had, he liked to look at Dimetrodon. The eyes were empty holes, but seemed to stare at him. He began to explore Apatosaurus. Its tail alone was 30 feet. The critters became his friends. They had so many bones. Field Mouse thought Triceratops was scary. Did those critters have fur like him? Were they lizards? Field Mouse thought it was fun to climb up their backs and slide down to the floor. He took naps where he could, but he wished he had a cozy spot of his own. One day, to his surprise, the giant critter in the Great Hall was gone. Men and women kept going back and forth. They were putting up something to keep the crowds away. So there's this putting up this big wall so nobody can see what's going on back there. Field Mouse still had not found a home. To cheer himself up, he went into the cafe. He found a scrap of tasty, excellent cake. He was hearing, sue this, sue that. His ears rang with sue. What was it? Then one morning, there it was, all put together. The sue they had talked about the biggest T-Rex in the world. She was 67 million years old. Of course, he didn't know that. A lot of people stood in front admiring her. She had peculiar short stubby arms. Poor thing, thought Field Mouse. How did she ever pick up a piece of cheese? So this is Remember the name of the book, The Field Mouse and the Dinosaur Named Sue. So this is the dinosaur named Sue. It's a T-Rex that they, scientists found and they put up at the Field Museum in Chicago. Later that night, the hall lay empty, except for Sue and Field Mouse. He walked up to each foot. He climbed on her toes and crawled up a leg. 
Slowly he climbed up, searching. And what do you think? I'm thinking that he might recognize one of these bones. In coming down, he stopped in the middle of the other foot. His bone, his very own bone, he chattered to Sue, but she kept silent. Under his bone, it was dark and cool and safe, a fine place for a secret nest. He made it with bits of paper, smooth and round. Maybe Sue had been a terrible angry hunter once, crashing through forests of tall magnolia or oak trees, but now she was quiet and gentle. Field Mouse was sure she was singing a soft song. Under the foot, he dreamed a happy dream. He was home. So that bone on Sue is the same bone that was his roof when he was living out before he ended up getting packed up. So Sue was named after the fossil hunter who found her, whose name was Sue Hendrickson. So they have to be very, very careful when they take those bones out of the ground because they're very fragile. So the scientists at the Field Museum are the ones who did a lot of studying and research on her and put her all back together. All right, this is a super cool book. I know it's kind of long, but it's one of my favorites. I'll read to you guys again tomorrow. Bye.